it is. It's tough when you're doing it live. That's why it's, it's good me and Taryn there because then Taryn shares it, right? So Right? Yeah. And good evening once again, fans. You're listening to the Death Natural Podcast. They're more than welcome to come on to anytime they want to come on. Oh, man, those girls pop good like All right. It's a budget thing. Let's see where he's up to. Thank you, man, and thank you for giving me the time. Tune in right now. Good evening, everyone, and you're listening to another episode of the Death Natural Russell Podcast. My guest at this time, he is a pro wrestler. He's an owner. He's a podcaster himself. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Dez. Hey, what's up? The uh, Des, I'm just going to say Des the Eskimo. Yeah, what's, what's going, going on? on? Yes, sir. Des the Eskimofo. Destro the Eskimofo here in the house. Thank you very much for having me, man. Hey, anytime, you know. This is what we got to do. It's like, you know, get our friends and we got to get, you know, shit. We grow here as a, you know, as a, as a business and bond with people and, you know, help right. promote, promote wrestling. So if you ever want your guys to come on, they come on my show. I'd love to have them so we can help to, you get some publicity as well. Oh, it's so rad, brother, for sure. I'll let the guys know that for sure. I do mm-hmm. want to start off like with the intro you gave me. I love the intro. Um, yeah, I am yeah. I am a wrestler in training though, right? So it's when you say yeah. pro wrestler, it's like, hey, I've been I'm inside of a year here. You know what I mean? We're trying to get this stuff going. Very green. That's right. what I make that very clear. Okay. okay. By all standards, I am not trying to call myself on the same level. I've seen some of your shows. I've listened to some of them, and I'm nowhere on the level that these guys are at yet. So, but getting there. You take. You know what? Steps take steps. You know. You take. Yeah, the man. Steps. Exactly. So, you know what? But. You you let's just say more of the promotion you're 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 dealing with more of it. Of it. Oh yeah, you know. That's yeah, oh yeah. I'm... The booking, the promoting, uh, the running of the company, the actual like getting the shows together. We've had one show so far, and it was it was rad, it was rad as hell, man. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. And for all these people don't know, he's a, we're talking about a Canadian promotion here. So <laughs> yeah, so totally Arctic wrestling. This is based in the yeah. Nuvik Northwest Territories. Uh, we're the only wrestling promotion in the Arctic Circle of the world in Canada, at least. Uh, I know there are some promotions in Alaska, but this is in Canada here. Uh, mm-hmm. Nothing like it. Uh, we're we're getting a lot of attention, a lot of love from a lot of people, man. It's it's fucking great. That's good. You want eyes to catch, you know, wrestling because you know Canada. You know, it's hard for a lot of the. Like, other promotions, you know what I mean? There's a lot of companies out there, and then big, small, you don't know, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, locals could come and check out wrestling, and it's, you know? Or- the the biggest thing we have against us is how much it costs to get up here. It's uh, $2,000 Canadian to get here from Edmonton, Alberta. That's the closest big city to us. Yeah. So it's a, it's a bit of a reach, but a lot of people want to do it, and we're more than welcome to have everybody up. So, hell yeah. But get my ass over there. How's that? <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. Come on up, dude. I know. Like, like Canada, been there when I was a kid. <laughs> nice, you know, Montreal, Quebec. Oh, sweet, is that where you've been? Yeah, yeah. Nice man, nice dude. Uh, but uh, man, so yeah, you guys. Uh, and also, you're you're tr- gonna be getting a special someone as a manager, or she's gonna be working the show. I heard. Are you talking about Taryn? Yes, the one and only Taryn. <laughs> the one and only Taryn Lee. Yep, the yeah. queen of the DEC. Let mm-hmm. me tell you, that uh, my life has gotten crazy since I met that one. Let me tell you, she's, uh, she's, she's awesome, awesome, man. She's yeah. awesome. She's a, she's a go-getter. She's a go-Instagram mama for, <laughs> <laughs> for, <laughs> for, for that <laughs> man. For that nasty man. Yeah, that nasty, nasty man. Yep. I'm looking forward to the show this weekend, man. July 4th, GCW. It's gonna be great, man. Leroy's gonna beat the shit out of that Dilf boy. It's gonna be oh, so good, dude. I'll be, I'll be there. Yeah. Are I'm you gonna be there or are you watching it? I'm going. I got. Oh, you're actually there. gonna, you're actually gonna be there. That's crazy, man. Also, you guys I, are like, you're all like close enough that you can actually travel to that then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. LSG is going. I'm gonna ride up with LSG. What? Really? That's rad, dude. Holy Fuck shit. Yeah. That's yeah. cool, man. That's yeah. cool. We're talking to LSG about coming on our show too. So hopefully that happens soon. Yeah, get him on. He's good. He was a good guest to have that's, on. That's awesome. Yeah, I read. I listened to the show there. That was cool, man. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, man, you got you're you're still hooked into a lot of cruises and shit with AEW. I noticed, like you guys, you you go to the max with it. You're pretty. <laughs> yeah, pretty man. Uh, the, well, the Jericho cruise, right? Both Jericho cruises. I've been on both of them, and I'm scheduled for number three. Uh, whenever that happens, hopefully it happens sooner than later, but who knows with all the stuff going on, right? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, but the cruises are a fucking wild time, man. It's it's a party unlike uh, no other, definitely. No, no. And you got to show Le- Leroy the way, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's going to be good, man. Like I said, Leroy's going to have a great time there. That guy's got, he's such an awesome dude. And that cruise loves good people, man. I swear, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's such a good time. Yeah, yeah. I wish I was going, but yeah, it's all right. Yeah, let's go back to work. I got to get back to work, make some more money. There's always number four, man. There's always number four. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I think the last cruise I went to Bermuda, that was it, you know? Oh, nice, man, nice. Yeah, we made jokes that we were going to get lost in the Bermuda Triangle there, uh, going down to the Bahamas, but we didn't go through, and it was just kind of like <clears throat> that big running joke was like, what if we did, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Actually, we were uh, actually we were like thir- uh, 20 kilometers, uh, about 30 kilometers or miles away from it, actually. We were uh, a little scuba diving expedition, oh. and they brought us uh, – they were talking about – the the movie The Deep was filmed. Oh yeah, cool. Fucking that uh awesome movie there. I forgot who's the actor in that, but it was pretty cool. Yeah. Nice, man. You could rent bikes and all that shit and just have fun. It was crazy. Sweet. Oh, Fuck. shout out to Monsi. We got Monsi in the chat here, hey? Hey, Monsi, hello. Hello, Monsi, the one and only. That was a pretty wild zoom call we had there. That's a big crowd, hey? Holy smokes. Oh, well, tonight we're probably going to have another. Oh, really? You guys do it more than that's cool, man. <coughs> you can join us. Keep yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's a fun time. It was good conversations yesterday. Yeah. Fun group yeah. of people, man. Uh-huh. Everybody's like Chicago. Everybody's elsewhere. It's really wild. Like, everybody's all, you know, two guys from Alaska. That's pretty badass, though, you know? Yeah, that was pretty funny. It's, it's it's interesting for me to jump on a chat and not be the most northern. I think I still am geographically the most northern, but to have somebody that close is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, man, yeah, you got a list. You got a long. long you, I just saw you, you, Taryn. You're posting more fucking interviews this week, man. You got a lot coming as well. Oh man, yeah, dude. We've got. Uh, that's the nature of the game, right? Nature of the beast is you got to keep the content flowing. And uh, we're running a pretty fun party show. There's a lot of people we want to get on, so it's just a matter of time, right? And mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of like, you know, do we run one episode a week? But then it's like, you know, okay. Uh, we were thinking about pre-taping them, you know what I mean? But we love yeah. the live element of getting the chat in on it, right? Yeah. So uh, so that's why we said, you know what, let's just push it. We'll do Tuesday. We'll do Thursday night this week and maybe even Friday. We'll see. I think we have somebody lined up for Friday. Um, but we have some, yeah, we have some fun times coming up, man. Yeah, I, I got one tomorrow with uh, oh, El Ridiculoso. Nice, that was man. Good. Yeah, so that'll be fun to talk with him. Sweet, man. Sweet. So how long have you been doing this now? I've been on three years now. Holy smokes, dude. And it's yeah. just like, is it like, obviously it's from all over because you're pulling guests from all over the place. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. UK as well, you know? Yeah. Big Joe. Big, big Joe FX, you know? Big shout out to him. Sweet, man. That's rad, dude. That's awesome, man. So what got you started in this? What's that? What got you started in doing pods? Just the fan of wrestling, you know, just yeah. all, all promotions, you know, caught my eyes, you know, just all the promotions that we, we love and support and, and, you know, being a part of like a, you know, a community, you know, just to help out it and get, you know, opinions from the wrestlers and get, you know, questions and their whole life story. It's pretty cool. Sometimes like, you don't know who you'll have on your podcast. Hell I had Drew. Uh, oh God. I had a, uh, the Highlanders guy on one of the Highlanders. Oh, nice, man! Sweet. So that, so that was like badass. Like to talk with you know somebody who's been around PCO. I've had PCO on. Fuck yeah, off. man. There's so many different perspectives you get out of wrestlers, and you oh. talk to them. But it's funny how wrestling is the one thing that everybody has in common. But everybody yeah. has something else that they bring to the table, right? Everybody has that other thing that they're into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I like to mix it up with. Yes, that's why I like to mix it up with uh, you know death. Deathmatch wrestling, come on, like that's perfect fucking like gimmick. I mean, I love it, and you know yeah. what I mean. But then yeah. all kinds of wrestling intertwined, like you know, just yeah. uh, it's a Fuck world, yeah, man. You know, no, it's rad as hell, man. No, myself, like I said, I'm into short films. I'm, I've been making short movies for. Mm-hmm. Fuck, almost 10 years now. Yeah, man. So I've got like, you know, com, my website. Check it out. All my movies are there. Uh, mm-hmm. All my short films are pretty short. Last summer, I got to make a stoner film. I got to actually make a stoner comedy. Thought mm-hmm. that was pretty fucking rad. And it was like a dream come true, man. It was something I wanted to work on for a long time, for sure. There's a lot of guys in the podcast world, like a lot of friends of mine that are, you know, movie guys on the side, you know, which is really cool. It's really like, you don't know, you know? Well, I mean, like I think from from myself being a filmmaker, I found it was really easy 
to do these pods, to do interviews like this in this format where you're not editing at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? It takes all the all the stress away from editing, so it's just nice and relaxing to just shoot the shit like this. Yeah, and then and when the stream yards came along, I studied up, I studied it and learned it. I was like, holy shit, this is fucking easy to use. This, yeah. You know, fucking better than the OBS and all that other shit, you know? Well, that's it. I started using OBS. I loved OBS because it gave me so much control over the clips I could run in. It felt like a real TV show because I could use the titles and I can do all kinds of really cool shit with video and mm. different channels and stuff like that and overlays and green screens. Uh, but the problem was is I, I couldn't figure out how to get this. I couldn't get a live chat going on with people no. and yeah. have the text on. And I love that interaction. So that's why I started doing it like on this. And it was like, well, shit, I still have OBS. I still have all this other stuff that I've been using for it, but at the time right now, it's like StreamYard's the way to go. It is. Like I said to you last night, you know, fuck, they just up, up grown, updated to 10 people, 10 guests. That's pretty well, fun. They need to because right now, I mean, we could be on Zoom, right? We could go recording a Zoom, but we can't go live with the chat, and that's yeah. the difference, right? That's the difference. I haven't even looked at any, any other um, streaming services. Yeah. I was actually turned on to StreamYard from Chris. It was actually Jericho that told me. Oh, that no, this is what he was using for his Saturday oh, night. Oh yeah, special. he was messing around with it. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Because well, his out. first week he went mm-hmm. Facebook Live with Kevin Smith, and he had Kevin yeah. Smith on a laptop, mm-hmm. and he was like, "I don't know how to split screen it." And then the <laughs> next week when he had a split screen, I'm like, "Yo, what are you doing?" And he's like, "It's Streamyard." I'm like, "Oh fuck, let's get yeah. Streamyard." And for thirty bucks American a month, that's not a bad service, man. Dude, I use it for two hundred. Yeah, I do the two hundred plan. You know? Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, I've got it by the month right now. I should just go all in because I'm using it for. The Triple D AEW review I do with Dean Midgley. I've got the Taryn and Dez show with Taryn. I've got the Dezro show that I do on my own. Mm-hmm. So I've got more than enough reasons to keep it going, right? Yeah. I, I, and plus, I'm part of, if you see Podcast City Network, that's part of my team. Two, two guys out of Florida. They actually are awesome. One, Bad, man. one run runs a sports podcast, you know, <clears throat> and uh, we general knowledge, pop, everything, wrestling, you name it. We got it all, you know? Yeah. Sweet man, Are you, and you're in Jersey, right? Yeah, I'm at the shore. I'm man, that's shore. rad as hell, man. I'd fucking love to be in Jersey. I got to New York uh, for WrestleMania last year before the COVID stuff, and uh, I really forgot to go to fucking uh, to Jay's uh, to Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash, right? The comic book shop there. Uh, I'm such a big fan. I've ordered movies from there before. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan, mm-hmm. uh, but I fucking totally spaced on going there myself while I was so close. Right. So next time, and then Camp Crystal Lake. I want to actually get in on the lottery. To go Dude, I'm, a, I'm in that lottery. Yeah. Are you? I'm My fucking, to... I've got a guy in this town who lives in this town, in this Arctic town of 3,000 people. Him and his sister have both been chosen in the lottery. His sister actually went, got all the pictures and shit. They did the fucking the midnight screening of the movie on the beach. She got to go in the canoe and everything. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. And he got his number called, but he had other stuff going on in his life, and he couldn't do it, so I think he passed on it. My friends got, I think I got my friends in a marriage thing there. They oh, wow. The That's cool. Yeah. It's badass, from Massachusetts. Nice. Hell yeah, man. I fucking love that movie. Fuck yeah. It's like man, a classic. Honestly, and I feel so dumb because like I'm 37 and I've just watched them in within the last year. I have them all here on DVD. Somehow, like I've watched bits and pieces growing up, you know what I mean? And it's on, but I've never really fully sat through one. And mm-hmm. I didn't know the whole story, right? So it was very late in life that I'm like, wait a second. Jason wasn't the original killer. Hang on a second. He didn't get his mask until the third one. Hang on a second. You know, and there's all this kind of shit like that, right? Yeah, I remember, I remember going to. Uh, I actually went to the horror con one year. I went to one of those like uh, Chiller Fest, they call it. Oh, and nice! I, I met Keen Hodder actually. It was pretty awesome. Holy fuck, man! That's pretty dope. Yeah, met him. I met. Uh, holy shit! There's so many people. Like fucking, I met Roddy Piper was there. They were doing the li- they live, and I was so pissed off. The line was packed. <laughs> <coughs> I had a great talk with Tony Candelo, uh, wrestling promoter Tony Candelo here in Canada, and he's actually the guy that gave Roddy Piper his whole gimmick, right? Like, that's nuts, dude. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. He said Roddy Piper was wrestling a show for him in, in Regina in Winnipeg there, mm-hmm. and uh, they were backstage, and he didn't know what his gimmick or his name was really going to be. Like, he was training to be a wrestler. He was ready to start wrestling. I think he said it was 1979 or something, he said. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he said, well, what, what are you into? He says, well, I, I, I've got my bagpipes in the car. I can play my bagpipes. And he says, well, dude, this is writing itself. How have you not thought of this yet? You know? Uh, yeah. So there you go. What, what, another cool thing of a, a, a friend of ours on our podcast team, we actually have a guy who's the WWE, he does the, all the original music with Jimmy Hart. Oh, Jim Johnson? No. J.J. McGuire. Oh, wow. 
Fuck Holy yeah. smokes, man. Wow. So he's the one that did, uh, did Jimmy Snooker to Demolition. To cool, man. Cool. Those are the some Baywatch fucking theme. jams, man. The Baywatch theme. Oh, really? It was an extra on the show that you wouldn't get rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> That's rad, dude. Hell yeah. If you ever want to have him on, let me know. Be kind of, I'll hook you up with him. That's cool, Boy. bro. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. So where do you want to go with it? Like, what is this? Do you want to do this full time? Do you want to host full time? Or is this like, it's, are you comfortable it, with being a side? It's a hobby. It's a hobby, you know? It's like yeah. a hobby. When we have time to, when there's no shows, no wrestling, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, uh, plug yeah. away and get everything out there, you know? Just enjoy it. I mean, you know, small shows start big and you just have fun. It's just, it's all about fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the stories are, you go way back into like childhood stories of yourself too. It's like, holy shit. Like, you don't know my story, do you? Like I tell people millions of times on my podcast, you know, like how I, how I got into wrestling, you know, and shit. It's like, a, it's a, like a history, you know, fucking, I was at WrestleMania five, you know, as a kid, like, cool, man. you know, how I always show off my, uh, ticket stub with, uh, WrestleMania. Ah, no way, dude. That's well, rad as hell, man. I had Marty Gennetti sign it at a fucking show, even though he lost local ah. show. That's so dope, man. That's a WrestleMania five ticket right there. Right? Well, I, actually, I was up in the bleachers. My me and my old man, five rows away, Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse doing the commentary. Oh, holy shit, eh? Had the I had my Mega Powers poster, you know. I was all amped up. I was like shit, but I can't see it. You can't see it really. I have to look really like glance at the, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's hell, though, man. You got those memories, and that's that's gonna be there forever, dude. That's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, it's like um, fucking like one like WWF Heat, like when WWF, WWF had that restaurant, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was there for that shit, you know? Like I got to go to the show. I wasn't expecting to be on TV and fucking hanging with Taz and Michael Cole, you know, like being right in front while they're doing the Stone Cold Steve Austin Booker T match in, in the supermarket shit was going on that night, wow. you know? Holy fuck, that's cool, man. So we were like doing Ric Flair fucking talk. Bullshit. I think uh, Chuck Colombo was in the ring too. It was fucking wild. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's super cool. Mm-hmm. That's awesome to have those memories. When I went to the last WrestleMania in New York, me and my buddies all had tickets. Well, I didn't have a ticket, right? That was the thing is they got tickets, like floor tickets, and they were trying to find a third, but it's like, fuck off. You're not going to find three, right? You're going to find mm-hmm. two or you're going to find four. Uh, we ended up finding a single for myself, like way off to the side. So I ended up watching WrestleMania for. $800 Canadian or some shit like this sitting with strangers yeah. and the ring was kind of too far away to really see the action. So I'm watching it on a screen up here and I'm watching it on the screen above the ring. And I'm like, uh, I was looking at that earlier that day and I knew I didn't have a WrestleMania ticket and I knew I was going to be sitting by myself. Mm-hmm. And I looked and there was a bunch of bars that were watching WrestleMania and like, you know, uh, Val Venus was there, one of them. And you know, like, you know, like these guys yeah. were just chilling out. And it's like, fuck, I should actually just go to one of those and just get to hang out with wrestlers and fucking have a good time and laugh with dudes mm-hmm. rather than sort of just sit in a big, which became a very cold, windy arena. You know what I mean? That wasn't right. the warmest. Like, yeah. I went to I went to New Orleans the year before, and that was warm as hell. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a big dude. I can't do heat very well. It's, yeah. it's plus 26 here today, and I'm still, like, I'm sweating. It's hot. Mm-hmm. So. Wow. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. Like, like you know, being seen, like, like, I'll tell you what, how many shows I got lucky enough, like as a kid, also, like growing up, wrestling came around. Fucking, we had NWF wrestling. NWF. Holy, eh? Hey, what's that? So, uh, National Wrestling Re- National Wrestling Federation. Okay. Bruiser Brody. Oh, wow. Wow. So, I got to see like a young Bruiser Brody. Yeah, in his fucking prime. Jeez, man. Holy it's, shit. Fuck yeah. I'm doing the butcher, but I miss seeing him. I, it was a school night. <laughs> cool. But I got to see Chief J Strongo, so, uh, Julius. Yeah, Julius Strongo. I think his name is. Wow, brother. man, that's rad as hell, dude. Like, Probably I didn't. Fantastics to the uh, David Schultz. Like, yeah, fucking David Schultz. There you go. Like, wow, man, those are some names. Like, that's some history right there, dude. You know, uh, that's what I really like about that show, Dark Side of the Ring. You know, yes. you really, I'm, I learned so much from that because I, I, like I said, I started watching wrestling, uh, WrestleMania eight. Tito Santana, Shawn Michaels was the first match I ever saw. I mm-hmm. loved it. I've been a Shawn Michaels fan ever since. Uh, but I never went back in time. I never went back through the ages and learned all that. So thank goodness for Dark Side of the Ring. You know, uh, shout mm-hmm. out to Josh and to Evan for that one. Yeah. Super, super rad dudes. I got to meet them in Chicago, man. We had a fucking blast, dude. Holy awesome. shit. Yeah, we had a blast there, man. That was fun as hell. 
Awesome. It sounds like, uh, yeah, there's so many things, man, growing up, like, man, like mid 90s, like 80s, you know, fucking 90s came around. Fucking, I, I became, you know, fucking wrestling was like the hit top in my top of my next town over, man. Shit, like we had like independent wrestling that was <coughs> was owned by the, actually there was a promotion. Actually, the own actually the wrestler Iron Mike Sharp. Can't heard the name yet. Ran a school in my town. Holy fuck, man! And so you were really exposed to it from a young age, then. Yeah, like yeah, for five bucks you could go on a Saturday and watch fucking X Pac wrestle as the one two three kid. Jeez, man, that's fucking, super cool shit, man. Because like up here you don't get any of it. We had one wrestling match come to our town in the history of our whole town. And, uh, but we had, hey, we had, uh, King Kong Bundy was here. Brutus Beefcake was here. Mm. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan came up here. So we had some big names. It was pretty awesome. Mm. And even, even Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man has ties to the Northwest territories up here. So mm. used to live in Yellowknife. That's pretty rad, man. So, but yeah, just to, you know, see these guys at a young age, like X-Pac and holy shit. Like these guys are just starting a career. Um, who else? WCW start, uh, Malice, Malice, the Wall, aka the Wall from WCW. Okay, you know, you had a uh, shit, and that's that, like you've been in New Jersey area your whole life, then, or have you been anywhere else in the state? Actually, I actually I was born in North Dakota. Oh, cool. Help me out here for for a Canadian with no geographical sense at all. I'm fucking dumb. Uh, so, are you very close to Chicago? Where you like so New Jersey to Chicago, or is it farther east than Chicago? I'm more floor, uh, Chicago, uh, New York, New York, and Jersey. You know, yeah. Okay, I'm on the shore. I'm, at, I'm actually where the beach fronts are, the, where you hear about Jersey's uh, Jersey Shore, that stupid c- show in Seaside. Oh yeah, yeah, all those greasy, uh, all those greasy party animals there. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Are you down with that whole scene yourself too? You I'm like right in the middle of town. I'm in the middle of town. Like it's like I'm right, like five minutes from the beachfront. So it's like yeah. So, have you have you done your gym tan laundry routine yet today, or no GTL? Okay, I'm a redneck tan. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Carpenter stand. That's why I started cutting the sleeves off my shirts, just so I could actually get some actual decent, like darkness. I'm not a beach. I'm not a beach person though. Like no? I got a pool. I got a pool. Why would I want a fucking above ground or is it below ground pool? Below. Below. Fucking below cool, ground. man. Good. Good call. There's. I don't know. Apparently, there's a real lot of. There's a lot of hate for people who have above ground pools. It's like go fuck yourself. Yeah, that's not but a real I, pool. But I was just saying about, uh, you know, they would have that promotion and then Nova. Uh, ECW wrestler Nova okay, would, yeah. would uh, wrestle there, and then his brother ran a promotion. It was called Phoenix Championship Wrestling in the mid '90s, man, and it launched all the guys that you would think of off the top of your head, from Samoa Joe to uh, uh, Kazarian, really? and, uh, Christopher Daniels to uh, AJ to uh, Sunjay, a young Sunjay, you know. Wow, man, that's holy shit! But that's that's almost like everybody to NWA right there, right? Everybody from there went to TNA, pretty much. Pretty wow. much, and yeah. Then like that's growing cool. up, you know, and I got got hooked on like local local shitty wrestling and other promotions that really didn't make a name for itself. Actually, that's where I met Joey. I met Joey at the first NWS show. It was yeah, his. I saw that. I read that. I saw that in your uh, you were talking to LSG about that. That's how cool. he how he was a young kid, you know, sixteen, just going. I go to watch him wrestle. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So Did GCW, you, what are those shows like? I've never seen one before. Fucking nuts. Really? Fucking, fucking insane. It's like that ICW. No holes oh, barred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Road. Fucking shit's crazy. <laughs> but but actually, you know, G- Game Changer really, you think about, look at what the stars that they provide. Like, it's it's a different style of wrestling with Deathmatch 2, you know, wrestling as well, you know? Yeah. And then they get chances to go places. That's you right know. as hell, man. I mean, who was the first one that got picked out of there? What, Marco Stunt? You know, and then Joey Janela. Think about it. Yeah. You know, Jungle cool, Boy. Man. Jungle Stunt. Boy. Are all those guys from there? From Game Changer? Yeah. They, they started there. Really? They got, they got their kick in the door. Yeah. Jeez, that's awesome. Because, no, Jungle Boy, I don't know. Because they picked him up because, what, his dad? I guess his dad, you know, they didn't know. Nobody knew about him. You know, mm-hmm. that L.A. show or something. Remember that L.A.? They had a, did, Game Changer did an L.A. show with, uh, what is it, David Arquette or something? I never saw it. Oh, fuck. You'll have to see it. Huh. That was the one with uh, Nick Gage. That was the one with Nick Gage and David Arquette ankle? No, I didn't see that one, man. Where he got honestly, over, I just I got, just got turned on to GCW here. I'm very late to the party. Oh, well, getting check it out. Yeah, Busted with Light Tube, yeah. It was it's something. 
<laughs> That's awesome. How do you feel about David Arquette? Are you, are you like how's I haven't I like seen it. him wrestle. I haven't seen him wrestle in the new since he's taken it seriously since he's yeah. come back. I yeah. haven't seen him. No, I really haven't seen anything. Cool. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm happy for the guy because, I mean, hey, fuck, I love wrestling too, man. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Game Changer has it all, you know. And IWTV helps out, you know, which is really – that independent network is awesome for launching, you know, for wrestling. It catch a lot of different promotions, you know what I mean? Shit, that's awesome, man. <clears throat> but, yeah, this Saturday I'm stoked. The card gets – it's getting lined up. Lineup is going long, bigger than ever now. I'm like, yeah. Hey, who else is on the card? Uh, Christopher Dickinson as a young Christopher Dickinson at Dirty Daddy, like uh, facade. There's like names that you would know as a kid, you know, like on the indie scene. It's amazing. That's rad as hell, man. I can't wait to see it. I'm looking forward to it. They got a big spotlight anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Big spotlight. Have you seen that Dilf Boy kid wrestle before? He's a ring rat. He's a ring kid. He lifts the lifts up the ring. He picks like, up. The- and he he wrestles though. He's been wrestling for a while. Yeah, he's a shithead. Yeah. <laughs> he's a shithead. Okay. Well he looks like it. It looks very easy for him to pull off, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well that's he's cool, good. man. I'm looking forward to it. He's gonna get a taste of the cold, nasty reality, you know? Yeah, he is. He's gonna get that Nyquil hands, man. He's gonna wake up and looking up at the ceiling there and he's gonna like he's gonna wonder what happened to him, man. And Leroy's mm-hmm. gonna beat the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. There's no other way to put it. No, and Joey will be there. Everybody's gonna be there to support him. So hopefully, you know, I think yeah. Jesus is gonna Make the trip too, which is awesome. That's super rad, man. Cheeseburger's awesome. Yeah, I gotta get him soon. I gotta get him off for a podcast. He's definitely a character. You know, he gets yeah, on all. Dude. No, super rad, dude, man. That was a fun show we did with him. That was probably our best one we did yet. We're only 14 episodes in. It's been so fun. We started during COVID pretty much, right? Yeah. I started, I started doing a couple of lives on Saturday night, and then we joined in with the group, and it was like, yo, we've been talking about making the show for so long. Why don't we just make it now? Let's just get people on and talk and. Party and shit. That's what we're doing already. So here we are. And that's, you know, I've been, I had took a 30 day furlough, you know, so I'm going to be back to work soon, you know? I was okay. Like, I was like, all right, you know what? Hey, I'm a garbage man, you know? Let the guys need it, you know? Yeah. So I get a little bit vacation. So what? What? June, June 8th, I was, I'll go back to July 20th, you know? Take the summer off, the summer of 2020, man. It is. And then I'll still have time to go back to vacation if I want to pick it. <laughs> You know, after, <laughs> after, you know. Yeah, cool, man. Mm-hmm. But uh, what else, man? There's just so much, man. Yeah, so all the wrestlers, like, you know, Game Changer's a place to be, like, for, like, the cool wrestling, you know. But also, I follow a local promotion. It's called, uh, Ga- um, uh, there's a guy called Matt Tremont um, from H2O. Okay. Hardcore hustle organization, you know. They're pretty uh, local and bring new guys in and, Nice. Death, got death match guys and they have their own thing it's pretty awesome that's cool man that's hell yeah what about yourself any interest to get involved in there announcing commentating anything like that fucking i'm a fan you guys want to get fucking cut open or fucking no. <laughs> i just like enjoying what I, you know being around people you know yeah just that's right man be with that's everybody rough. you know be yourself have fun and i do these live podcasts sometimes i'll do a sponsorship for local shows you know yeah which is good Hell yeah, man. Hell but yeah. now I'd be able to use that fucking live shit on our fucking mobile. I got to test that out. I got to test that out. Yeah, same. I think, I don't know if I'll use it full time. Maybe I'll just use it if I'm on the run or if I'm traveling or something like that. But I've always got my MacBook with me. So I'll always have a computer, right? Yeah. So I'm curious how that works out. I'm not yeah. sure. But anyway, man, what else you got for me? You got anything to ask me anything or what else do I got for you? Shit. So how, so you guys, so man, you got your first. So you had that. First, this is gonna be your second show, correct? You were saying. Tell me. Yeah. yeah. So we've had our first show in November. It was awesome. It's on YouTube. Totally Arctic Wrestling. We mm-hmm. shot it in a log cabin. We actually filled up that log cabin room there. It's like a. It's a friendship center. Oh shit. Um, yeah. So we filled it. The capacity of the room was at two fifty, but our ring is at twenty by twenty. So our. It's funny because when we started this, when we started TAW last June, we actually mm-hmm. just celebrated our one year anniversary of TAW. We, uh, we knew we wanted to run a wrestling show up here and bring wrestlers up and put on shows and cards for people mm-hmm. and learn and learn to, how, how to wrestle ourselves, right? Sort of do it kind of like, you know, like amateur, kind of like a Young Lions program. Um, but what ended up happening was we couldn't find a wrestling ring. So I bought an MMA ring, like a boxing ring off of my brother-in-law. 
Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. So it's a 20 by 20 MMA boxing ring. It had five ropes on it. And uh, we, I bought the thing. We brought it up north. And then you realize that a ring like that, when you get slammed on it, you're not supposed to get back up again, right? It's not supposed to be, all mm-hmm. right, let's go for another one here. What's the next sequence? Yeah. You know, it's supposed to be, oof, I'm down. Bop, bop. Okay, I'm down, right? I'm right. done. Or you're not even getting slammed on it because it's like uh, kickboxing, right? It was like more of a kickboxing ring, a boxing ring, yeah. than it was to take slams on. Mm-hmm. So it's it's got a really, it's like 2,500 pounds of steel. It's got a really solid frame on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when we when our trainers actually came up in October of last year, we put the ring together for the first time and we looked at it and we said, holy shit, there's a level of plywood and then the planks and then one thin mat. Like, yeah. So we luckily enough, our high, our high school here, they got rid of their old gym mats and they let us use them. Oh, that's a plus. Yeah. 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 The old, old wrestling mats. So we have like the old, you know, thick foam. Thick, yeah. And uh, so we actually put that on under our, our mat. The ring looks great. It's a black and red theme to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of our local welders, Beller Welding, one of my buddies mm-hmm. I grew up with here. It's a small town, right? 3,000 yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, he actually did the welding for us. So he popped out two of the posts, two of the rings, to the rope, sorry. So we mm-hmm. have a three rope uh, ring now. So it's like an actual pro wrestling ring, or it Shoot. looks like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you know, in a pro wrestling ring, the middle of the ring is the softest part. It's like got the most spring to it. Ours is kind of different because ours, the middle is the hardest part. <laughs> So what we did was we cut out a couple of cross beams. We took out some of the cross beams so there's a little more flex in the planks. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now we have four soft spots in our ring that we can use for slams and things like this. Oh, wow. That's yeah. pretty cool. It's amazing. Like, you never know. The insides of a ring are really amazing. Like, the you know, people really don't know the insides of a ring. You know what yeah. I mean? You learn a lot I, about it, man. Like, some, they're all built differently, right? They're all they built are. differently. It's, it's like the ones in Japan, you know? Those, those thick, hard, those, that's a... Yeah, it's like you see those like holy shit. You're like you get a thump on that. It's like fuck. And yeah. that's what we're learning too. Is like we're taking bumps on a on a harder mat. Like I'm still scared shitless of bumps, right? Like when it comes to bump day and stuff, I'm like, oh Jesus, right? Like fuck, uh, because our ring is it's hard. Mm-hmm. And even our trainers are saying, you know, like it could be so hard, it might just like fucking turn you off of wrestling. It happens to people. Right. If my trainer has seen guys, and I'm sure you've heard about this too. You've seen guys too. That they'll be like, I want to wrestle. I'm going to learn how to train. I'm training how to wrestle. And they'll fucking make a character and they'll buy gear and they'll put all this money into it and they'll mm-hmm. make social media accounts. And then they get into it and they realize, I don't want to do this anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're talking to Cheeseburger and he said he's got people that, you know, like that they come in for the classes and they're like, I'm good, man. You know, thank you. And it's just like, dude, what about your money? Like, go, yeah. do, do it for the rest yeah. of the camp here. Do it for, every, yeah. I mean, hell, it's, you're getting, you're getting a lesson. Um, there, on the right way of doing it, and, you know, and if you're not, you know, like cheeseburgers, you know, he's a pro, so he knows how to train the guys, and you know, yeah, exactly, man, exactly. I mean, a lot of these shady guys, we've seen it, we see it. You they go into the ring and they can't take a bump, you know. Yeah, and you got to learn these things, right? Exactly, you have to learn these things, and that's why we're at the level we're kind of like at a place where we're learning how to do it in front of the community kind of thing, right? So it's kind of mm-hmm. like we're learning with them. And they're really cool about it, but we have these other high, like we're actually bringing in pro wrestlers that are seasoned, trained, been in it for years, decades, some of them, you know what I mean? And they're putting on these massive, we want them to put on big matches. Mm -hmm. And then we were scheduled to have our next event uh, coming up in June, or sorry, in April. Everything was like, I've got posters right up there. Those two, right there. So that's Retribution and Clash at the Coast are supposed to be our two events we had in April with a full fucking roster from British Columbia and Alberta. Oh, and wow. then, then COVID hit us. So we couldn't bring anybody up here. I know. I mean, right? fucking, yeah. And now it's to the point where we can't even wrestle. So like, I'm literally, we're in the ring. We're doing rolls. We're doing tumbles. We got a crash pad. So the guys are trying some dives and shit, but I'm like, fuck this. I'm using the crash pad for bumps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. So we're just doing what we can, you know, doing what we can. Yeah, and uh, you know you're launching it soon, right? Pretty soon, because I saw you paint. I saw you painting a picture, painting us on a car or something. The logo. Your tape. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So what ended up happening was uh, we uh, the RCMP, the local police here in Canada, mm-hmm. they've got this thing in the community where they said, "Come on out and paint our car, kids!" Right? Come on, community, paint yeah. paint the car. And I'm oh, like, wow. "Well, well, fuck mm-hmm. it." Our uh, our aunt's, our kayfabe uh, owner of TAW here, the owner of the guy who owns runs the show. 
Mm-hmm. He he also runs the youth center in town, and he said, "You know what, you guys come on down and and just you know be seen in the community." And we're like, "Hell yeah, man! That's the so way to do it. Catch yeah. the, catch the people's eye by his look. Hey, I painted a car. You know, <laughs> I mean, my logo. Well, I painted, a it's a cop car. It's one of the yeah. fi- it's one of the five cop cars in our town. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like it went around all day like that. So people got to see it. That's but the cool. one thing that we've done is we've created a what was really important to us was that we wanted to do something for the community and for the kids." In in the north here, I don't want to get super serious. It's super dark or whatever, heavy. Um, but in the Arctic of Canada, there's a real su- there's a real suicide problem. You know, a lot of kids, a lot of kids, mm-hmm. like we're talking 11, 12, 13, 14, like and onward at that young, they're killing themselves, man, because they're fucking they've got issues, right? There's a lot happening in their lives that they can't deal with, and they need help, right? Mm-hmm. They need something to look forward to, man. They need something to look up to. I've lost many people that I love, that I know to suicide, you know? Yeah, me too. Um, and it sucks, man. It fucking yeah. sucks. It's, it's everywhere. But what you want to do is, especially in these remote places, like when you talk about traveling to shows and seeing shows, bro, I have to drive for 17 hours to get to the next city of 20,000 people. And they're not putting on shows there. I have mm-hmm. to, I have to drive for almost three days to get to a city of 2 million people where they how do house shows for WWE. They did one pay-per-view there. Then that was when Benoit was alive. You know what I mean? And that was it. That was backlash in 05, or was it? Or 04 or something? Oh, wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it was a, it was a while ago, right? So it's mm-hmm. like, it's, it's fucking, it's so hard for kids up here. So that's what we wanted to do was we wanted to make something for the kids. So what we did was we made TAW totally accessible. One second. Mm-hmm. We made it totally accessible to everybody. And what ended up happening was we got 150 people come out to our event. And man, some little kid in town made this for me, dude. You know what I mean? Like, dude, that's crazy. like, that's like, yeah, that's a, like, that's like a support of, you know, as, as like we were kids, we would put a sign up, you know? Yeah, like, man, you would. And that's what it would happen in a wrestling town. And that's what we're fucking building is we're building a wrestling town from nothing. There was nothing here. Mm. We, we fucking paid five grand Canadian, which is like, yeah, whatever, th- yeah. three grand American or whatever, right? To fucking bring in a ring. And it was like, holy shit, man, that took a lot. The company shipped it up here for free. They're one of our biggest sponsors. Mm-hmm. We're actually set up in their warehouse right now. It's like, you know, you, you know, remember the old video games? You know, playing a wrestling video game, and mm-hmm. you start off at level one. Yep. And, and you go into the old shitty garage. Yep. And there's, there's bird shit on the ring, and you got to clean it off before you wrestle. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. us. That's us right now. We're literally in a warehouse with steel. It's uninsulated warehouse. Thank God, though. I'm so grateful for the space, man. But it feels like the first level of a wrestling game, and we fucking love it, dude. We're just there. We're training our asses off. We're hoping to make something of it. And uh, and we're we're showing people along the way, you know? All of our episodes, uh, we did five episodes for our first show. They're mm-hmm. on YouTube. And it just sort of outlines the story of, hey, we want to start a wrestling company. How do we do this? How do we get trained? Okay, let's put on a show. And then we got our asses kicked. It was hilarious, man. Mm-hmm. But it's great. You know what? You're showing your community that you 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 know, you want to help out and you know, as a fan of wrestling, that's like what we do. You know, we have to help help each other out, you know, help help uh in a situation when somebody's down, you know. We do the benefit shows and this and that, you know. We we always help whoever needs help, you know what I mean? Well you gotta give everybody you yeah. have to give people a reason. Like, man, we have had <coughs> in our town like this, like I chose November because November is the dead time of the year. There's no yeah. events happening in November. Mm-hmm. We, like I said, the capacity of that room is 250, but you put that big ring in it. We could only fit 150 people in there. Mm-hmm. We sold out to capacity. We had to turn 30 people away at the door, right? Like that's how, that's how big and loud, like check it out on YouTube, Total Dark Wrestling. Um, we've got this spot here. I want to see if I can actually, cause I think I've got the, I've got a clip, just a short clip of the actual finish of the show here that I want to, I want to put up here and I can share my screen so we can do that because it was, it was a really crazy time, bro. Like we actually Mm -hmm. went all out for this thing here. Um, and it was just, it was just fun, man. You know, like this is what we did. It's what we wanted to do. And we went all out for it, but like, and every kid that left the show that night had the time of their lives, man. Like they Mm -hmm. were going bonkers for it. Yeah. To get that $5 picture with the wrestler is great. You know, come on, they love it. You know, eight by 10. You put a yeah. smile on her face. You put a smile on a family's face, you know, or a special certain, you know, a special handicapped or, you know, disabled. That's the, you know. Yeah, it's about it's about making those moments, man, making those memories. <clears throat> okay, cool. Be able to share it? Yep. 
Uh, yeah, right here. Boom. Can you see that? No. I just see our screen. Okay, it's not showing up as a uh, possible. Oh, here it is. Yes, I got to add it. Okay, there we go. So this is one of the pros there in the red shorts. Mm-hmm. And that's one of our home guys right here in the blue. His name is actually Blue. <laughs> yeah. And so this is the end of our tag team match here at the end of the show. So you look at this log cabin we had. And look at these look, the, the people here, man. Look at this. This is a They're ravenous. Pumped. They're pumped having fun. Bro, man. Yeah. Everybody's having the fucking wildest time of their lives here. And this is the first time this has ever happened in our community. You know what I mean? We've never had this sort of thing happen here. And this mm-hmm. is a place where, like, you know, like it's cold so long of the year. Right. Like people just like they came in. It was minus thirty degrees Celsius. I forget the Fahrenheit on that, mm-hmm. but there's the finish. We had this big reaction. Everybody went wild. You're like we just yeah. had a ball, man. Everybody yeah. had a great yeah, time. Man. That's yeah, bad. man. We had such a great time, man. It's sharp. Yeah, bro. It was so fun, man. It was so fun. You know, mm-hmm. it was so fun. People are still talking about it today. We just got our t-shirts in. We're just selling like crazy. Everybody's having a good time, and they're waiting for our next show. You know, they're just waiting for the next show we're putting on. And like it's it's great, man. We had a couple of guys in. We actually have an amateur wrestling program here in town that actually got to nationals in Canada, like a national Olympic wrestling team. Like it's pretty crazy. So their coach, I actually is a good friend of mine. He sits on the town council with me. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually came in and wrestled on our show for us against another little guy. It was hilarious, man. So much fun. So much fun. Sweet. Yeah, dude. Sweet. time is it wow we could go on forever what time is it i like to like i don't keep it too long though you know you gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah i keep it about it 40 30 to 40 an hour <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. i mean hey, man i know exactly the nature of the beast bro honestly thank you so much for having me on dude it's been a fucking hell of a time well you know what let's close it out right here yeah hell yeah dude let's plug all you want and all right all right so hey check it out here destro the eskimofo check me out on instagram Totally Arctic Wrestling, uh, Desdro the Eskimofo on Instagram. Check us out, deslorene.com, Totally Arctic Wrestling on Facebook. The Des and Taryn Show on Facebook. That's the meat and potatoes of it all, baby. That's where we're going. Check out the Des and, the Taryn and Des Show. We're going crazy every single week. We have awesome, awesome guests. We've got the Desdro Show happening, Triple D Wrestling Entertainment. There's just so much. There's fucking tons of stuff going on. But check it out, deslorene.com. All the links are there. All right. Thank you for coming on, Des, and I'll see you soon. Yes, man. Take care. Good night. Good night. Fans, that was awesome to hear from my guest. That was awesome to hear from my guest, Des, uh, from Total Arctic Wrestling. And uh, another podcast, the Taryn and Des show, also as well, co-host of that. And, man, what a night it was. You know, you fans have to realize that it's hard to put it for wrestling, you know. And here's a promotion that wants to build. And you know what? They're going to get places, which is awesome. And, you know, keep fans, keep your eye out because you never know who will show up at one of those shows. It's in Canada. Yeah, take a trip, fans. If you're there, you know, maybe they can do some magic for you. <laughs> Wrestle. Have fun. You know, like he said, it's a community. Have fun. Support each other. And get out to a show. Fans, stay tuned. Tomorrow night on the Deathmatch Russell, I will have indie pro wrestler, El Ridiculoso will be on my podcast. Fans, have a great night. And tune in next time to the Death Natural Russell Podcast. You can find more Death Match Russell podcasts on the following social media. DeathmatchRussell.com. Follow on Twitter at DavidNJ32. And on Facebook, facebook.com slash DJDaveNJ32. Instagram at DavidNJ36. Hey, wrestling fans. I want to mention Collar and Elbow. Collar and Elbow was founded on traditional values of professional wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product intended to connect with people on a, an emotional level. A symbolic relationship where one cannot flourish without the other. We strive to create a product that embodies our passion for professional wrestling expressed through street fashion. Visit Collar and Elbow brand and use the promo code Deathmatch Russell Podcast and save 10% off when you make a purchase. Collar and Elbow.
where wrestling passion meets street fashion. Find me on Podcast City Network at podcastcity.net, facebook.com slash podcastcitynetwork. Hit the like button and share. And on Twitter at podcastcitynet. You can hear Deathmatch Russell Podcast on Stitcher Radio and on iTunes.